Wisconsin Eye's 2014 election coverage is brought to you by the Wisconsin Hospital Association. For over 90 years, a valued voice for Wisconsin hospitals, supporting high-quality, high-value care in communities like yours. Wisconsin and I is at the Brown County Library interviewing candidates in 2014 elections. We're interviewing Mr. Chris Plant of Ashwabanon. He's a Democrat running in Assembly District 4. Chris, welcome to Wisconsin Eye. Thank you. It's nice being here. Programming note, Wisconsin Eye appreciates the support of the Wisconsin Hospital Association, which represents more than 139 hospitals and health systems for making these candidate interviews possible. Um, first time candidate, Chris? I am. Give us a short version of your bio, please. I, I grew up in Waukesha, Wisconsin, a very conservative area. Uh, when I went off to UW-Platteville for undergrad, my family moved up here to the Green Bay area in Ashwaubenon. And after UW-Platteville, I went down to Southern Illinois University for law school. And I graduated 2013, came back up here. They were looking for a Democrat to run, and I decided to go for it. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, your website is... Uh, got some specific issues on there, so I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. You say we should invest in schools and tech colleges. Do you want to explain that? That's kind of your philosophy. Uh, right now, our, our public school system has kind of been under attack from the current administration. They've been cutting a lot of budgets. It's been going on for quite a while. And in order to really keep the teachers and keep good students, we need to be investing and in putting money into the programs rather than taking it out. We've got teachers right now that are spending out of pocket to provide for activities for their students and that shouldn't happen. As far as the tech colleges go, we've seen a skills gap develop between uh, students going to college, they're going to four-year schools, and they're coming out not being able to find jobs. And if we invest in the tech schools, we can get people to go to those tech schools instead of the four-year programs that don't really have jobs. We can give people the high-tech manufacturing jobs that pay well, have good job security, and really invest in the manufacturing of uh, Northeast Wisconsin. If you're a member of the assembly, you're going to be voting on the next budget for public schools. What priorities will you push for? Um, obviously, we need to increase funding. Um, as far as specifics, we need to increase funding for our K through 12 programs, um, and really, we need to cut down on the vouchers. Uh, the vouchers are cut really down, cut down or get rid cut, of. Them. Excuse me for. I, I would like to uh, really see us get rid of the private school vouchers, but uh, for the meantime, at least cut back on that because we have 70 percent of the students that are in the expanded voucher program were already in private schools, and so now we're having two taxpayer-funded school systems. We're having the private school system. Uh, which is private companies being subsidized by taxpayers and we have the public school system. And I think that's a waste of our taxpayer money. We need to have one school system and that's the public school system which has really been one of the greatest in the country for quite a while. Um, two months ago Governor Walker asked that the Senate and Assembly withdraw or repeal Wisconsin, take Wisconsin out of the Common Core standards. Your position on that? I mean, with Scott, uh, Scott Walker is really, he's the one that wanted the Common Core. It was a federal option. The states didn't have to adopt that. I think at this point, the Common Core has had its issues, but it hasn't really been a lo around long enough to really see how effective it is. Uh, I think we need to give it a little while and then revisit it in a couple years and see whether or not it's actually improving or hurting, and then we can make an informed decision, not just a biased decision. Okay. I want to ask you about another issue on your website. You mm -hmm. want uh, criminal sentencing re reform. You point out that 10% of prisoners are there for nonviolent offenses. Mm -hmm. uh, should they not be in prison for those, sir? Um, a lot of the nonviolent offenders are drug offenders, whether possession, dealing, uh, things of that nature. And some of them do deserve to be locked up, but for majority of them, especially possession of marijuana, small amounts of drugs, I think the better thing to do is get them rehabilitated, get them off the drugs, get them uh, gainful employment, and just, I think, uh, probation and parole and uh, programs to really integrate them back into society is the best way to go about that rather than incarcerating them, having a scar on their record which will inhibit their ability to get jobs. Okay. Let's talk about transportation funding. The Wisconsin Taxpayer Alliance says if we fund transportation at 2013 levels, 
for 10 years, we're going to be $2 billion short. Mm -hmm. How, your thoughts on making up that deficit? I mean, there, there are a couple of options to go, and I haven't really delved into the research on what would be the most effective. Um, obviously, raising the gas tax is one way to go. I'm not a fan of putting in tolls, and I'm not a fan of doing a mileage-based um, vehicle tax. Because mileage-based vehicle tax, if you're doing a cross-country road trip, then you're also paying for that in Wisconsin along with the states that you've driven through. So I think gas tax increase is really our most um, viable option to go with this. But like I said, I'd really have to research the issues a lot more to really have a more informed decision. Would you consider raising the $75 that you and I pay to register our car? That hasn't been increased since 2008. That, that's another possibility because along with the gas tax issue, we have a lot more electric cars and hybrid cars. They get better gas mileage or don't use gas at all. We use a lot of our gas tax to build our roads. So by increasing the vehicle fees, then we're also having the electric vehicles that don't pay gas tax contributing more to the roads that they use. Let's talk about health care. Um, was it wise or not so wise for the state of Wisconsin to not take the federal money to expand our Medicaid program? I don't believe it was wise at all. We had uh, the option to get millions of dollars in funding to cover almost everybody in Wisconsin, and instead the current administration has said, well, those 60 to 80,000 people that would get coverage under the federal expansion, we'll just keep them off of Medicaid and let them not have health insurance. And those are the people that can't afford their basic medical needs and will go until they have to go to the emergency room instead of getting preventative care. To have a healthier Wisconsin, we need to get people in to preventative care programs. The American Hospital Association said Wisconsin's Medicaid reimbursement rates are the second lowest in the nation. Should they be increased? I mean, that's really an issue that I would need to look into more research. I know that uh, you know Medicaid and Medicare, they don't pay very much to the hospitals. I understand that I've done a research paper on that in law school for uh, the state of Illinois. And they, they do pay below uh, cost. And I do believe it should be brought up to at least to cover cost. Um, tax collections fell 281 million short in the last fiscal year. Mm -hmm. If that turns out to be a deficit going into the next two year spending cycle, how should that deficit be uh, made up? Well, I think a big issue right now, if you look at our property tax reimbursement, for example, from uh, Scott Walker, uh, that was almost as much as our current deficit is going to be. Um, we need to stop giving so many tax breaks. Uh, if we realistically look at taxes, if everybody pays actually bring the, the actual rates lower because there aren't so many exemptions and will actually be gaining enough money to sustain uh, the cost of running the state. Okay. We touched on uh, uh, medical, uh, the criminal penalties for, mar for, for uh, marijuana. Mm -hmm. um, the bill to legalize medical marijuana is something you could support? Oh, yes. Yes, I think, I think we're really missing out on a huge industry that's really starting to take over a lot of the states. We've seen so many states pass medical marijuana bills. Uh, states are starting to pass hemp farming bills. Uh, Wisconsin used to be a leader in producing hemp before it was banned by the, uh, the government. And that's a great job creating industry that we could bring back to Wisconsin. And um, Colorado, state of Washington, legalized a recreational use of marijuana. Do you think that should occur in Wisconsin? I mean, right now, I don't know if it's the right time, but I do believe it's something that I could support in the future. Um, again, it's something that can lower the cost of our uh, corrections and our law enforcement costs. It's something that can add tax revenue and add a huge number of jobs. But we need to have the right environment in the state to do that. So I don't believe the next session will be the time to do that. But I think in the next five or ten years that it could be something that that could pass in Wisconsin. Environmental issue. The bill that passed early last session that changed mining laws to let Gogebe Tech and I potentially apply for a permit for Ashland and Iron County. Mm -hmm. Would you have voted for it? No, I Why? would not. Uh, I mean, our state is built on the recreational industry, hunting, fishing, and by gutting these environmental protections, 
they've basically allowed um, the mining companies to just dump their waste into the uh, water tables and streams. And we need to protect our environment and it's really a balancing act that we need between investing in corporations and jobs and protecting our environment. And I believe as Wisconsinites, we truly value the great environment that we have for all the recreation that we partake in. The frac sand mining debate. Should state government set minimal standards and no local government should go beyond it, or is it purely a local control issue? Really, the, the frac sand mine should be a local issue. I think there should be guidelines set by the state, but if the localities believe that it's something that they need greater protections for, they should be allowed to do that. First offense, drunken driving. Should it be a crime? Yes. Should be? Yes. Okay. Um, as, you, as you do doors, Mm -hmm. as a first-time candidate. What, do you, what, are, what are voters telling you are the number one issue? Uh, number one issue is, I don't know, it's kind of hard to say. Um, a lot of people, especially um, parents with young children, are concerned about the education system. Okay. They're not happy with the way the education system is going under the current administration. Um, number two is the fiscal concerns. Uh, there's still this sentiment that Democrats are spending tax uh, a party, but we're really not. We're really moving into being fiscally conservative but socially liberal, and I think people are really responsive to that. Okay. What have you learned about Assembly District 4 that you didn't know before you started knocking on doors? <laughs> um, I was expecting it to be a lot more polarized. Um, you know, I, I was in law school during the first couple of years of uh, the current administration, and just watching that from the news, it just seemed like everybody was torn one side or the other and nobody could get along. But everybody is very cordial. I've had very few negative experiences. People are still interested to know who's running and what their positions are because this district really wants to know who they're trying to elect. And finally, do you want to highlight any differences between you and your opponent on November 4? Um, I think the first stark difference is the fact that I live in the district. Um, Mr. Stefan has said that if he wins, he'll move into the district. Well, why couldn't he run in the district where he lives in now? Um, he's very much a slash and run uh, conservative, and I don't believe that's good for our community. Okay, thank you. Chris, Chris Plount of uh, Eshwabanon is a Democratic candidate in Assembly District 4. Chris, thanks for talking to Wisconsin Eye. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you.